I have the King of Diamonds and join the performance. I adjust my glasses at which point. I have the King of Diamonds and join the performance. I adjust my glasses at which point the card switches. If I show you this from an exposed point of view, I have the King of Diamonds and join the performance. I adjust my glasses at which point the card switches. If I show you this from the side, you can see I have the King of Diamonds. And during the performance, I adjust my glasses, at which point the cards switch. Charlie, Charlie, Charlie. You're looking good, lady man. You want a diet or something? Charlie, if you're not prepared to start your day with a good dance, Get the f out. <laughs> Charlie, don't get jealous because my sausage is bigger than yours. It's not a competition. Boy, I'm excited for today. Today is the day that we're going to finally share the dope switch. Yes! Charlie, I know that you didn't want me to share this one, but it's time, man. It's time. This is one of those utility devices, as you know, that's going to be so helpful for people when they want to switch one playing card for another when they're right in front of somebody. Why did I call it the dope switch, Charlie? Because it sounds better than the invisible top chain lateral tenkai uh, palm switch. And it is actually dope. Dope. Can't say that word properly, Charlie. Dope. You know me, Charlie. Not a time waster, so I'm not gonna waste any more time. Let's get straight to it. I'm Daddy Madison. Does that make you Baby Madison? You're Charlie Madison. Let's get into the dope switch. Silly sausage! I am Daniel Madison. Welcome back. Thanks. Thanks for being here. Do appreciate you choosing to spend a bit more time with me and Charlie Madison today. I get so excited at times like this, times when it's time to share an absolute F swear word, miracle of a move. This is the invisible top change. This is a lateral palm tenkai switch. There's all kinds of different names for it. I'm calling it the dope switch. Not yet, not yet, not yet. I show the King of Diamonds and in the action of just adjusting my glasses, I'm able to switch the playing cards. The Nine of Clubs is now here. Where's the King of Diamonds? If I turn to the side, I can expose everything and show you that the King is held out very dirtily, a very dirty way right in front of my face. So an exposed angle, the King is here, Nine is here, and in a brief moment of just adjusting my glasses, I'm able to switch the playing cards right in front of you. This is such a beautiful, dangerous, daring, and bold move that isn't really when you get down to the nitty gritty. I'm going to teach you everything about this move and make it easy for you to master and even easier to execute and perform and stun people with. Now, I tipped this move in a few, in a, if you can hear that, that tapping, the, the dripping, I've got a leak in my ceiling, so please forgive the dripping. It's actually got a smooth beat to it. So I tipped this move a few times, but I've always used it as kind of a device, a utility to achieve a different kind of trick. I think it is very valuable for you to learn something like this, a switch as clean and fair as this that you can apply to other tricks. So instead of focusing on a trick, in this video, we're gonna to stick to the actual slide and I'm gonna teach you everything I know about this dope switch. Here's what it looks like one more time, now that you know how it works. Nine of Clubs is here. We're talking about the King of Diamonds and in a moment when I, when I just adjust my glasses, just move my glasses, I'm actually holding out the King up here now and Nine is here. We're gonna go over all the intricate details and how to get into it, how to get out of it, how to execute and achieve it to the best of your possible advantage. You can see how excited I am over this. Let's get straight to it. I'm Daddy Madison and this is the Dope Switch. Yes! So let's get straight to the mechanics of the Dope Switch. Before we figure out ways of applying this to magic tricks, how you get into it, how you get out of it, all that jazz, I want to start by taking a closer look at the actual technique, the mechanics how it works, how you get away with it. For me, uh, uh, it's a slight advantage because I'm wearing these glasses. Don't need to wear glasses. 
really don't need to wear glasses. One of my favorite tricks of all time, card to mouth. Maybe I'll teach that one day, but card to mouth. There's a moment where, for me, where I come up and I just wipe my forehead. What? You know, but it's a human thing. It's a very natural thing to just come up and wipe your forehead. We'll get into it. Right now, I'm going to focus on using my glasses, and then we'll look at all the different ways to uh, not justify, but motivate why we're going to do the switch in the way that we're going to do it. To begin with, the first thing that we need to look at is the way that we're going to be holding the Nine of Clubs. Now, the King of Diamonds is going to be the subject of the switch. The Nine of Clubs is going to be the deceptive card, the deception itself. The Nine of Clubs is held in modified lateral palm. So if we look closely at this, the tip, <laughs> the tip of finger two is on the uh, outside corner of the card and the inside corner of the card is in between my Spock hand. It's, it's in this gap here. They call that um, a, a flannel, I don't know. Uh, so it's in uh, finger two here and in the flannel. So finger two is pretty much just holding the entire card in my hand. So nine of clubs is like this. So if we get it into that position to begin with and just focus on what that looks like and what that feels like, Obviously, we're not going to be stood holding it like this. Not yet, anyway. It's going to be held down here, so it's much more comfortable and easy when, when your hand's in a natural position. Now, you'll notice when you hold this card in front of you like this, nature kind of takes over, the instinct takes over, and your hand kind of just goes into its natural shape. What happens is finger two kind of retracts naturally on its own, so you don't need to grip the playing card. Your hand will just do that naturally. Not really, you don't want the card to bend, you just want it to be straight. Uh, the grip is very, very light, and you'll notice that finger three curls much further, in, not much further, but further into the hand than finger two. So finger three goes underneath that card, allowing that card to balance. So it's balancing on finger three, but finger two is holding it against the hand. The pinky goes in a little bit more, and finger one on the thumb just relax. It's a very relaxed uh, way. It's a very re relaxed behavior, body language. You, you just look like you're stood there. I'm just stood here. What's the big deal? Do you know what I mean? It's very natural. You don't have to hide it. And, and that's an important thing. Don't think about hiding the playing card. The way that this palm is designed, that playing card will be hidden when you're just stood like this. This is a very natural way it's done. You know, when you analyze it, when you think about it, it's quite weird because I'm still with my hands like in front of me like a dog, but it's a very natural and acceptable way in the audience and the participant of mind. It doesn't look unnatural is what I'm trying to say. There was an easy way of saying that. Play around with this for a little bit. Just, just see how it feels. Look in the mirror. Always, always, always practice in front of mirrors. My entire room is surrounded by mirrors. I'm not vain. This is all for practice purposes. I don't spend all day looking at myself. Well, I do, but not my face. Why am I talking about this? So look in front of a mirror and get used to this, this way of handling a playing card. It becomes second nature. Your hand is so relaxed and so carefree. That you're in fact holding this card so lightly that it could possibly fall out. You don't want that to happen though. So, You'll notice as well when you're looking at your hand in this position that your thumb kind of naturally, naturally, it will lean towards, it will go more towards finger two. So it's almost on the top of this card. You probably already know this move anyway, but I need to make sure I give you the best possible lesson in every aspect of this. So this is how I'm gonna be stood and my hands are just here ready. Because in this moment, this is a switch that means I don't have the deck in my hand. Don't have the deck in my hand, I just have empty hands and I'm waiting for a playing card. So let's say that I've given the deck to Susan Sausage and I could say, I want you to, de to deal me the nine of clubs, right? I, I know she's not gonna do it. Well, she could do it because I have a duplicate in there, but I'm gonna say, I want you to deal me the nine of clubs. She deals me a playing card. She puts it on the table, puts it in my hand. We don't know yet, but she gets it out of the deck, king of diamonds, not the nine of clubs. This allows us a moment of relaxation. So. When you do the switch, now I've got the card in this hand, notice how I'm still very natural, very normal, nothing suspicious. Yeah, I'm still holding out the whole time. We need to, the switch to happen at a moment of, not misdirection, but uh, uh, attention manipulation. We'll go over that. Um, 
I need to really focus on this because I'm trying to explain it as a trick rather than a move. So we'll skip the trick part of this because I just want to get to the move to start with and then we'll go over the trickery of it. So at a moment when the guards are down, that's when the switch happens. And the most important part of the switch, like any deception, you don't look at what you're doing. Don't look at what you're doing. You want to be making eye contact. You want to be looking at them while they're doing something. So let's say Susan, you've asked Susan to look through the deck to find the Nine of Clubs. This gives you the, the perfect opportunity to switch that card. We're going to hold the King of Diamonds like this, pinched between finger one and the thumb, just like this. The, the other three fingers are open, this is very important, they're open like this. Not like this, you're not going to stand here with your fingers stretched out, but it's very relaxed. We're simply going to place the King of Diamonds into a Tenkai palm into this hand. It's going to go straight into it, there's no trickery in it, there's no ifs, ands, buts, ors, whatever. You just simply put it into a Tenkai palm in a very calm, relaxed, chilled out way. You're not going to rush, you're not going to try and hide it, you're just going to do it just like this. So your hands come together for that brief moment, it's now in Tenkai Palm. So it just practice that for a little bit on its own, just putting it in Tenkai Palm. Now I've got two palmed cards and this feels very natural and from the front I can see on the monitor it looks very natural. My hands just chilled out, yet it's holding two playing cards. So. The king goes into a tenkai palm and because your fingers are open like so, you'll notice as soon as that goes in here, your fingers are already in place. Finger one and two, pinch the nine and take it out of your hand. So the slight discrepancy is that the king of diamonds is held between the thumb and finger one. Yet in a moment, in a split second moment, you're now holding that playing card between finger one and two. But it's not something I've ever concerned about or ever worried about, and it's the easiest thing in the world to readjust that grip. So if we look at the grip, thumb and finger one, tenkai, finger one and two, and I just switch finger one of the thumb. So it's not something to worry about, but definitely needs addressing. So that's the switch. Nine of clubs is here, king into tenkai, take the next card. Hand is still very relaxed. This hand doesn't move, and that's the point of this. That's the that's the drive of this. The, the um, objective of this is for this hand to look as normal as possible because if this hand moves or starts acting suspiciously, then you're drawing attention to it that you don't want. So from here, uh, I'll do it for the camera. So I'm stood here, she deals me the king. King's no good. Uh, so, I, so I stand on the light and burn my foot, but I switch the card at the same time. Great misdirection. Now then, why not? Just leave it like that. Why do the whole glasses thing? Why go to my glasses? For me, this switch, this move, and most switches like this where the hands unnecessarily come together, for me, that doesn't work with me. When somebody does a switch where their hands come together for a second, arguably your audience or participant won't notice that. I would, so that's why I kind of step away from it and find a motivation so that nobody could possibly question what I'm doing. So nobody would say, but why did his hands come together at that moment? Maybe that's when he switched it. If they try and reverse engineer it, maybe that's the point where they realize, ah, oh, his hands came together for a split second, you know, for a moment. So I need to find a way around it. So um, also, I know I don't need to hide the card that switched. I know that I don't need to do that. So I take the king, at this point, the switch has been achieved. And I, oh, by the way, when you when you actually go for the switch, when the king comes in like this, you might find it easier to grip this card between fingers two and three. Certainly don't go uh, three and four, it looks weird. It's like you're holding a sausage. But still, I would still suggest that you don't hold it like this because this looks unnatural. I mean, this you can kind of get away with because it's so easy to adjust back onto the thumb. Um, but you have to play around with what's the most comfortable for you. Please don't do this. Please don't hold a card like this, which is weird. So, to kind of justify or not give them a reason to work out, or not give them a lead in working out what I've done, I have to justify why my hands have come together. Not necessarily for the participant, because they won't think about it. The audience won't think about it. And they certainly won't think about it when I come up to adjust my glasses because this is all just a natural uh, movement. Whereas if I just do the switch, 
and then stand here. There's this weird moment where your hands came together for no reason and you didn't, you didn't try and cover your tracks. So when they backtrack, that's the moment that they're going to get you out. Some people might argue that I'm thinking too much about this, but I want this to be as clean, as absolutely clean as humanly possible. And me adjusting my glasses puts an image into the person's mind, into the audience participant's mind. It puts an image into their mind that I can't possibly be holding anything in this hand to be able to have my hand near my face, touching something else, moving something else. It's, imp it's not possible. Of course it is possible, but it puts that image in the participant's mind that there's no two ways about that hand being empty. It has to be empty for him to have done that. And also for him to take the risk to put his hand up there, obviously there's no card in his hand. So you, you, you transmit that information that your hand's empty without having to go. And, oh, look at me, look, nothing in my hands, nothing to see. But you are doing that in a very, very subtle and very impressively psychological way. So if we look at this move from start to finish, she, I'm stood here with, uh, with the card in my hand, palm, hidden. I get a king of diamonds, it's not a king of diamonds, it's not a nine of clubs. Can you just go through the deck and find the, the nine of clubs for me, please? I, obviously that's not the pattern, I'm trying to focus on the, <laughs> that would be the worst trick ever. So it goes from here, you do the switch, and as soon as I've got that in Tenkai, this hand doesn't pull the card away. And this is the most important part of this deception. So for all the people who've skipped this part, <laughs> so I know a lot of people do. So Nine of Clubs, this is the most important point in this entire video. The king comes here. My left hand does not take that card away. It stays where it is. And that allows that moment to be completely overlooked where the hands came together. Because it's justified. King, here, left hand stays exactly where it is. This hand moves upwards because it can, because it's taking the Tenkai. Obviously, it doesn't have to go around this card. It can move upwards. Now, this is something that you're going to have to work on in a mirror, your angles, but from a Tenkai palm, if I just turn my hand naturally, not even turn my hand, just lift my arm, that card remains hidden, completely hidden from head view, even from side angles, especially from that side, from your side, when my hand's up here. And it's also something that I don't rush. So the, 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 the important lesson, the left hand does not move once you switch the cards. It's the right hand that does the movements. And that is why, and that is how we can uh, justify, not just, justify, what? Ju not justify, but it gives us a motivation to, to have clearance from the possible point of them working out the deception or uncovering what you've done. I hope that makes sense. So the king here, left hand doesn't move, right hand comes up, I adjust my glasses, I come back down, and now I can get rid of this card somewhere, or what I prefer to do, leave it in my hand because no one's looking at this hand. Nobody's looking at this hand. And um, all the while, this card has been switched right in front of them and they have no idea. So now we have the Nine of Clubs. So from start to finish, the Nine's here, they deal me a card, King of Diamonds, I adjust my glasses, and the cards have switched. So that is essentially the, I don't like the word essentially, I'm gonna try and stop using it. So that is the crux, that is the information of how you achieve and execute the dope switch. We're gonna switch angles, I'm gonna to talk to you a little bit more clearly about how we would get into that position, how we would use this in magic, in performance, in deception, and also how we uh, clean up and, and what you can do if you don't, if you don't wear glasses like I do. <laughs> Let's go. So the dope switch came from, oh, by the way, uh, it's nice of Charlie to uh, join us for this, isn't it? He's actually just hiding my microphone. Um, it's very difficult sometimes when you're filming um, more of more information, more me, to hide the microphone. And I don't know why it's important to hide the microphone. It doesn't really make much sense, but the microphone's right here. So what? So the dope switch came from an, an idea of, for those people who know, and I'm sure that's everybody, knows the top change. The idea of having the deck in 
the left hand in kind of a relaxed dealer's grip, having a playing card, and then switching the top two cards right in front of somebody. I was never a fan of it, never liked it, never really used it. Never found a, a need to use it because all the times that you need to change uh, what the this card for the top card, you, I just do it in front of people anyway, and it's not necessarily seen as a technique. It's just a very kind of non thing that happens when you're talking. So I always found it a huge waste of time. These professionals that I, who, who can do it really professionally and really kind of. Hmm, really like I never got it because that to me feels a bit like wasted time and I'm not a person to talk about wasted time because I, I talk forever and mainly about things that don't mean anything to a lot of people uh, but anyway I, I so I saw I finally found myself with a, a few ideas that could use a top change but I don't like I don't like the idea of it and, and I like to challenge myself as a performer and one of the as a deceptive performer, one of the ideas was imagine how clear it could be and how clean and, and dope it would be to be able to do a top change without the deck. And the idea initially came from uh, my advocate, my pocket index. So basically, for those who don't know what the advocate is, pocket index, uh, I, I have access to any single playing card that anybody names within a few seconds. So empty handed, they name a playing card, I bring my hands down here and then I come back and I've got whichever playing card I need from here. So to do that, to get a playing card and then to hide it into palms and then have a playing card dealt to me and it's the wrong one and then switch it right in front of somebody, that's, that's real magic. That really is real magic. And to say that I never had the deck in my hands the entire time, that's when you breach on real unexplainable magic. So I always aim for that. Um, so this this became a device move born out of just a simple challenge that I ended up I ended up using this so much so many tricks can be done with this and so many beautiful things can be done with this you know even down to the most basic thing which we're going to talk about right now because I'd like to inspire your own creativity your own creative approach to how you use this so let's say we in the explanation part of this video that we just looked at I mentioned that you give the deck to, to Susan and you say, I want you to deal with the nine of clubs. Meanwhile, you've got it held out. So how do we get it held out? Well, there's no secret to it. For me, it's gonna be the top card of the deck. And while we're talking, while I'm shuffling, while I'm explaining, or, you know, just the general interaction, uh, no explanation needed. I just simply push the top card over and take it into that palm. So to see what that looks like right in front of you as we're talking, uh, that's it done right you know there's no method to it really as long as you just do it uh, without looking at the deck and without rushing you know it's a very normal moment to just get and then give them the deck so as soon as the deck's been handed over you've got nothing in your hand otherwise there, there are uh, many different ways and it depends on your situation and that's why I sometimes find it weird to explain a move like this because it all depends on that moment right there when you're with Susan because sometimes I'll use the bottom card so let's say the nine of clubs is on the bottom so I'm going to take the deck showing this hand empty take the deck so I give it to her now this hand it must mean this hand is empty to her I've gambled I've gambled copped I've gambler's copped the hell out of the nine of clubs. So it's now gambler's cop. And as we're talking, as she's shuffling, I'm instructing her with this empty hand. I now do a transfer into a tenkai palm. Now I can show this hand empty. Obviously, again, not waving at anybody, not over exaggerating what I'm doing. But now I can afford to show this hand empty as I readjust the tenkai into a kind of, I think it's like a lateral finger palm, the, the correct term for it. Correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, then now I'm in position and in those few non moments I've been able to show both hands empty so she's shuffling I say deal me the nine of clubs or I want you to deal me a playing card we're aiming for the nine of clubs so she'll deal a playing card face down without looking from a shuffled deck and this would be a moment where people would expect to switch so they're gonna be looking closely yeah, he's gonna switch it so you show it you just pick it up finger at, at the edge like this, fingertips, at the tip of finger one and the thumb, you show it. Now, this is how we need to grip the card for the switch, but this tr this transmits some very important information that, that 
you're not going to switch the card because how could you switch a card if it's held like this? You know, you're, you're kind of overproving the fact that you're not doing anything by holding the card like this without even saying anything. So we showed a card like this, and, and at this point, you, you've got an opportunity to really play dumb and play down and, and force them to back off. If they're eyeballing you, you could go like this. Is it the nine of clubs? Is it the... So you've kind of shown them that you've messed up, that you've done the trick wrong, and it causes that, that very vital, important moment of, ah, you know, relax, he's not doing anything. He's just got it wrong. The idiot did it wrong. You know, they're not gonna think that because the trick's not over yet, you're just kind of beginning. So at this point, you've caused, you created a moment of relaxation where everybody's gonna chill out because it's not the nine of clubs. And weirdly, your audience, your participant, like to see you do it wrong. It's really weird, it's really sad, but it's kind of um, innate. It's kind of natural to see that, to, to want that from magicians for some reason. And as magicians, we probably don't really know what that feels like because whenever I see a magician, I'm rooting for him, right? Like, I don't want him to mess up because I know what that feels like. So, I take, is it, did I get the Nine of Clubs? Ah. Okay, can you uh, find me the, find me the Nine of Clubs in the deck for me, please? So, I will, <laughs> best script ever. Uh, find me the Nine of Clubs. <laughs> um, create some script at that point where you're gonna say, Okay, we need the nine of clubs. So find me the nine of clubs in the deck. Meanwhile, you've done you've done the switch. So, uh, okay, can you find me the nine of clubs in the deck? All this movement, the the justification, not justification. That's the wrong word. But but the the action of pointing to the deck and, and giving a command. First of all, doing this shows or kind of proves that this hand must be empty for you to use it so freely and to be able to point. Meanwhile, we're in tenkai, and then even more so that we can bring our hand up here. So, let's say you don't have glasses. Can't see. <laughs> so, when it comes to the, the card and mouth trick that I mentioned earlier, I, for that, in fact, let me explain it to you so you can see exactly what I mean. Uh, for the card, card and mouth trick, I would show, let's say, I show two of clubs, I put it in the middle, or in the middle of the bottom half, and then I take the top half and say, look, this is better if we just use half the deck. Uh, you push it in for me, please. And while I'm just wiping my head, the first time I do it, they look up to see what I'm doing. And then they see that I'm just wiping my head. So they go, oh, he's just wiping his head. So then when I come down and say, you push it in and wipe my head again, they don't need to look because they know what I'm doing. And the next time I do it, I go. And then I'm clean, right? So the whole motivation, the whole reasoning of coming up here is already justified. I've already put that into their mind. So you don't need uh, the glasses thing. You do need to do a little bit of work before that point. Or should I say you might need to do a bit, a bit of work at that point by putting that image in their head first. Saying that, then you, you might be thinking too much at that point. So let's look back at the, the uh, switch itself, Nine of Clubs, King of Diamonds, uh, without glasses. How would I do this without glasses? And again, it's very easily simply justified by, by it being such a natural human thing for somebody to do to just touch the face. Like I got a beard, I might just, might have an itch, you know, might want to move some hair on my face. Might want to just kind of adjust my collar or something. And it all, it all comes down to how confident you are with the angles. Um, and the justification, just, I keep using that word justification. I have to stop. So let's look at this. So nine is here. This is without glasses. So king, ah, uh, I'm not close for me. Bring my hand up here. I'm just going to wipe maybe the sweat because oh crap I got it wrong oh, I'm sweating you know but doing that from from kind of head on it looks like the hand is empty and that's what they'll think as well but they won't they won't register and they won't be looking for anything because the cards here and they have the deck and this hand has to be empty if I'm doing something like this now we can we can nullify the whole video we can get rid of the whole video based on one thing that we don't need to do this. We don't need to put our hand up here. We don't need to do that because I kind of just justified it myself. Justified. Uh, I, ju I kind of explained it away myself by, oh, we got it wrong. Find the nine of clubs in here. And that's enough by going ahead and pointing to the deck. That's enough of a, of a motivation, enough of a, yeah, I guess justification is the right word. It, it's enough because the hands, although they do come together, it's, 
in a, a it's in another action it's while I'm doing something else I'm not just doing this and then that's it you know yes they're coming together but yes it's for a very good reason so I'm just chilled out I'm like ah okay find the nine of clubs in the deck for me meanwhile you've done the switch so getting rid of this card I don't worry about getting rid of the card I can't see I don't worry about getting rid of the card I, I don't worry about it if anything to practice my deceptive technique and, and how good I can be at palming and to challenge that I'll keep this here as long as I can and you might argue that that's unnecessary and dangerous but that's how we improve as deceptive artists that's how we improve as sleight of hand artists as magicians of, that's how we improve at knowing where people are looking knowing our angles knowing when it's safe because and, and I, I'm looking forward to getting to 100,000 subs so that we can go to the street and I can prove a lot of things to you that I tell you about on film which is in this trick I could I could probably just do this I could probably oh we got it wrong uh, just find the nine of clubs for me in the deck please can you find the nine of clubs for me yeah yeah find the nine of clubs you know the, the things that you can get away with when you're good or when you get good uh, being able to manipulate the attention of the audience and the participant and the control that you can have over where they look and why they're looking there all that psychological information is far more important than the technique than the method so that leads me onto a different a completely different subject and point where I don't care about the people who turn up and they just want the method. They just want to know how that technique works this moment and then skip the rest because that that's like 5% of the whole thing. And I do feel a little bit unfair with one thing with not doing the street performances or the real, real world performances. I don't know why we say street. We say street performances because of David Blaine obviously, but the real world performances, I'm not showing you that yet. Not yet because I'm, my focus right now is on being a teacher, being a mentor and a guide uh, to, to the to the technique and the way that we practice and the way that we think and execute and approach deception with playing cards. So when we go to the to the street, to the real people, then uh, then you're going to see the whole the more important side of it. So I'm looking forward to that. Anyway, we're going to stop this video here because it's another long one. Let's go to the outro. That was the dope switch. Oh, it feels good to share that when it really does. I've held on to that switch for such a long time and in a way I kind of grew so used to it. It became second nature for me that I didn't really appreciate the value of it until I started showing it to people as if it was nothing and they were like, what the? Why do I keep doing this? And they were like, yeah, that's pretty cool. Show me how it works. And the more people wanted to learn it, the more I realized the true value of it. So I'm really happy that it's become part of my library library here on my youtube channel if you use this move or any other moves of mine i'm always looking out for people performing my own work i'll give advice where i can and i'll see you in the comment section or I'll ask in return make sure you're subscribed so that you get that little notification bell going ding 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 whenever i drop a new tutorial i'll be back soon with some dope tutorials new card tricks learn magic oh yeah check learn magic out just for the blinds only over at madison.ist tons more stuff but it's the more what i'm doing so with the mat with the alliance learn magic the new format of mine the longer videos the longer it takes me to explain a move or slide of hand technique a lot of them i want to save for my cult i'm just kidding it's not a cult the more i want to save for the alliance so the new format is only over at madison.ist the doors are open everybody's welcome well not everybody but i'll leave you with that i hope you enjoyed this video I'm Daddy Madison. Charlie Madison. See you next time.